Welcome back to Warfarnet and welcome aboard the American 84 Sky Raider. And I have to be precise, it's really the American on the, the French one. And I will talk about the big differences between practically the same aircraft in two different nations. At, for all intents and purposes, two different battle ratings that completely change the meta around the plane. Now, usually you have a plane in one nation, in one tech tree, and you fly it, you think to yourself, hmm, you know, the plane is good and bad, has good sides and bad sides, its problems and advantages compared to the enemy are this and so forth. And when you then talk about the 84 Sky Raider, things get really weird. Now, before I go into much more detail about the huge variety of topics that I can talk about here, I have to say I'm completely biased towards any sort of Sky Raider in the game. And that has to do with the 82 Sky Raider when it first came out. I had a game in Realistic Battle that um, way before my times that I made YouTube, um, I thought was worth sending to the Mighty Jingles. And he actually made a video about this plane featuring my replay and he made a fantastic video out about uh, about this i won against uh, three to four chats something like this and it was an absolute blast and not just because of this but around about this time i was switching from arcade air battles to realistic air battles anyway and um i played the plane wrong by playing it how it is supposed to be played and this also explains why I'm using the 84 Sky Raider as a fighter, or at least I try to. So I think ground striking is boring and repetitive and punishing, and it's just yeah punishing for the player that says, look, it's designated as a ground striker, I go for the ground targets. And there are many fighters in the game that also do this, and then they just have better energy retention, more speed when they're coming and so forth, and they just shoot you down and you think, yeah, well, the plane is rubbish. In fact, the plane is pretty good, I have to say. However, with the 82 Sky Raider, I had to play nearly a hundred games to get the necessary upgrades and so forth, and to realize it's absolutely trash, you know, racking up the ground target kills. Even if you manage to rack up all the pillboxes and so forth and bring every single bomb and rocket into, um, or transfer it into a, you know, pillbox kill or, or medium tank kill and, uh, you know, shoot up some triple A positions and artillery positions with your main cannons. It's just not worth it. It's boring, repetitive, it takes a long time. And I think still there is a place for that, okay? Uh, sometimes it's really cool if you get away with it and if you have more Sky Raiders and you cover each other, you can get away with it. However, um, I made my experience with uh, the 84 Sky Raider that is implemented with the French that has a battle rating of 5.7, much like the American 82 Sky Raider. However, you have four 20mm NM3 cannons with 800 rounds compared to just two with 400 rounds in the 80s, 82. Um, and you know, you have more or less the same bomb and rocket selection with the French one that you have with the American one. With the only difference being that you also can remove your entire payload. So even the 12 rockets that you are bound to with the American 82 and 84 Sky Raider. And I will come to this just in a moment. Furthermore, the American 84 Sky Raider also has the potential of featuring some Hydra pods. And they might be the only explanation why the battle rating is 6.0 for that. Now, why is this so, you know, important how the plane feels and they completely feel different? Well, the French nation feels really biased. It's the new nation, it makes the big money for Gaijin. And um, I know that, but with the 84 Sky Raider, they kind of have overdone it a little bit. In my honest, biased, you know, opinion, in this respect. I mean, you know, there is also the F8F1B in the tech tree, but it has the same battle rating, okay? However, with the Americans, with the Americans, you fight in a completely different meta. Let me explain. First of all, with the French, 
at 5.7 you fight so many German planes that are just so terrible to fly and you have a much easier time to deal with them. The BF 109s, the Focke Wolfs, the TARS, the Do 335s, they are all very fragile flying bricks and your 20mm cannons do a lot of damage. With the 82 Skyraider I featured a um, a replay I guess where I did 6 kills with the uh, 84 I think at a, at times I had a 3 to 1 kill to death ratio or a 2 to 1 kill to death ratio and it was so much more fun to spade it and yes I prefer it to go into a battle and you know fight the enemy fighters with a ground striker that is capable of doing so hell I did it with the SU6s and they are not the very best planes to do so so the 84 Sky Raider is much better suited to do so so you fight the Germans, you fight their props at 5.7, you get very rarely up to it. With the 84 Skyraider, with the Americans, it's completely different. Because with a battle rating of 6.7, you very often fight aircraft that have a similar or higher battle rating. And when we talk about a higher battle rating, we are talking here getting up to it all the time into 7.0 chat battles. Um, so the gameplay in the background that you see is when I was not up to it and I managed to do so. Yes, I shot a few chats down here and there, but it was mostly not worth showing because it uh, was a Horton or something like that that underestimated my turning capabilities and he uh, blacked out and so forth. But yeah, fighting chats that are more or less good versus inferior props and then you fight with american teams where should i begin the lack of team play the massive spam of bombers and the massive amount of other ground attackers including 84s and 82s you just have no fighter heavy teams that loses you a lot of matches that you otherwise would win. And very often you have to overtake the anti-fighter role with a ground striker because your P-51s and the Bearcats prefer ground striking because they complain all the time that they have no chance against fighting the British in the first place. Which I can't remember having, having to be done with the French 84 Skyrider. So again, very big difference in the circumstances that you have to fight. So, yeah, um, I think that sums it up. And still, I really like to fly the plane, okay? So in the background you see some sort of kill compilation and some nice scenes. I really love my 84 Sky Raider. And now I want to present you this gameplay. So we are again on Korea and now I see two TU-2s approaching me and I would gladly go into a head-on if they don't pay attention but the first one he wants the head-on you know it's the best thing that I can do that he can do and I roll out of the way and uh, yeah I want to kind of trick him into following me and he does and he does so again I use here the great maneuverability of the 82 Sky Raider to get myself into an advantageous position and I try to spray him here but I do not have the rudder control ability that I want um, I'm shooting basically upside down I hit him a little bit but not hard enough I receive a few hits but I set him on fire and now I let him burn okay usually this is not a good advice because Russians have you know very good fire extinguishing capabilities the SO8000 Naval tries to secure the kill and um, so be it there is not much that I can do and he looks like he's going down so now there is another TU2 one thing that you have to keep in mind when fighting Russians is not just do the Russian players have good aircraft capable aircraft um, at their hands but they also some of the time know how to use them that was a great evasive maneuver from this uh, AD from this T TU2 and I actually got the kill on the other TU2 Pfft, that's a difficult word I lost control here not quite sure why but it doesn't really matter I follow through get a nice hit in while he is going into an attack run I set the wing on fire that really um, destroys his controllability of the plane 
for long enough that he crashes into the ground. And now I got two kills. And there is an I-185 that looks roughly in my direction. He probably saw what happened to his to your two buddies and maybe maybe he wants some revenge. So I tried to use here the canyons to break vision but uh, the canyon is not steep enough and not high enough for for me to do so so obviously the i-185 goes through in following me and he plays it smart pay close attention to what he does because i'm use i'm using here kind of the same trick that the tu2 uh, used evasive actions and especially it works greatly at lower altitudes where you just are so close to the ground that if the enemy tries to zoom through, he might crash into the ground. Works exceptionally well against the Germans with their stiff controllability and so forth. Not so much against, you know, very controllable or very maneuverable aircraft such as Spitfires or the whole variety of the Japanese and Russian tech tree. So I also noticed the LA-7 coming in and I need to turn. This is normally a very bad position. However, a Tempest saw what's going on and he used the chance that I gave him to set the I-185 on fire. See, I was bait for the I-185. He dropped his altitude and he turned with me, losing his energy and he couldn't get guns on target, loitering too long in the vicinity to allow the Tempest to get guns on him and the Tempest executed it marvelously. Furthermore, the LA-7 is now also in trouble and uh, yeah, he has to fly in a straight line. He cannot really turn fight the Tempest, which would be a um, very normal thing to do. However, in this 8 vs 8, um, he now has to run from the Tempest and there's also the SO-8000 Naval coming in. And now this is crucial that the Tempest kills the LA-7 in the head-on. And that, my friends, was me having part in destroying half the enemy team. So it destroyed two and I was distracted for another two, allowing Tempest to get two more kills. So I think that was a good day's work at my hands. And uh, you know, if every ground attacker would try at least to do like that and would you know, participate in some sort of teamwork wherever it, po where it is possible, you know, matches would sometimes behave differently. And despite my best efforts, I went back to the airfield, I wanted to get some rockets. Spoiler alert, it didn't help, we lost the match because the remaining four uh, enemies destroyed the entire enemy uh, and destroyed our entire team. So that's it actually for me, let's recall it quickly. The American 84 Sky Raider is a fine plane, it's more or less the same as the French one, uh, which got introduced previously, which fights in a completely different meta, and the 84 for the Americans has a harder time. Nevertheless, those are great aircraft, use them in the anti-fighter role and trick some enemies, it's much more rewarding, it's much more fun than to Re rinse and repeat the whole ground attack uh, stuff with you know blowing up pillboxes, tanks and uh, some artillery slash um, triple A positions which is for all intents and purposes sometimes boring especially when you're stuck. So um, yeah, without further ado that's it for me today so thanks for watching, thanks for listening, please give this video a like if you did. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this uh, situation that is to a certain degree the same with the P-47s, you know, with the German and the Russian premium having a lower battle rating than the American ones. But all P-47s are under-tiered in my opinion and are excellent seal clubbers. So yeah, without further ado, um, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, give it a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other in the skies of War Thunder.